You're going to speak to us about an issue that I understand all too well, and it's oral mucositis. And you speak to it at a state of the science approach to a debilitating symptom, and it is. It definitely is. You know, I uh, have seen patients over 20 years with oral mucositis. I was a dental hygienist uh, before I became a nurse, and it was in those early days of working in a hospital-based dental clinic where I began to see patients uh, coming in with uh, terrible ulcers uh, in their mouth, as you probably remember, bleeding in their mouth, uh, and the pain that's uh, certainly associated with that. So. Um, at this Congress, we did uh, present the state of the science uh, for oral mucositis. Well, perhaps you can just start by explaining what is the condition. Sure. Oral mucositis is a breakdown of the tissue of the mouth. But let me back up just a bit. That um, the cancer treatment that we use today, either chemotherapy or radiation, is really targeted to kill the cancer cells. But unfortunately, as we know, it also kills uh, the epithelial cells that line really the GI tract from the lips to um, the anus. And these are rapidly dividing cells. That's right. They're rapidly dividing cells, like cancer uh, cells. And unfortunately, we get this uh, massive tissue breakdown of the mouth. Uh, patients about oh, 10 to 12 days after receiving treatment of chemotherapy on their first cycle may experience uh, oral mucositis. So we know that about 75 percent of patients who receive uh, high-dose chemotherapy will have oral mucositis. 50 percent may be outpatient. And we also know that those patients that receive radiation, particularly to the head and neck, uh, almost 100% of those patients will experience this debilitating disease. The ulcers in the mouth then create almost a window of opportunity, if you will, for bacteria to enter into the blood system. And for a patient who already is neutropenic or has a low white count, that can be terribly dangerous uh, for them because the bacteria or fungus will get into the blood and then we have patients who have very significant uh, infection problems. And early on, I mean, you have uh, problems such as thrush. And my very great concern for many patients is as soon as your mouth is impacted, your nutrition will be impacted. It becomes, it becomes extremely difficult to eat and drink. Correct. And uh, my research uh, in my dissertation actually did show a correlation between um, patients with oral mucositis spent more time lying down. Uh, they had more, uh, there was a correlation between depression, anxiety, fatigue, and patients did have a decrease in the amount of oral intake. So as we know, when patients don't eat or drink, they become cachexic, they become dehydrated, and that only adds to the overall problem, not to mention how important food and drink is to patients in our culture. And the other difficulty is even being able to communicate because sometimes based on where the, uh, the problem is or the blisters may be in the mouth, it is difficult to speak. Yeah, I always say, you know, if you think about if you ever bite your lip and the pain that you have with that, that patients with mucositis may have 100 times worse kind of pain in their mouth, and you're right, it does uh, create problems with communication as well.